All right, so in the last lecture, we said that mTOR, this protein mTOR, is important in muscle hypertrophy because if we drop block it with a drug, rapamycin, humans don't increase their muscle protein synthesis after exercise. When we do it in an animal, animals don't increase their muscle fiber cross-sectional area after weeks of overload. And when you use a rapamycin-resistant version of mTOR, the muscle fibers hypertrophy under overload. So this is telling us that this mechanistic target of rapamycin is important for increasing muscle size and potentially muscle strength. So if it's important, we need to know what it is. So this protein, this mechanistic target of rapamycin is, is a serine threonine protein kinase. Remembering back earlier, that means that it's a protein that's an enzyme that decorates serines and threonine, so two different types of of, um, of amino acids with these phosphate groups that negatively charges these amino acids. And the interesting thing about mTOR is it comes in two complexes, basically two flavors of the same thing. So the, the things that are the same in both complex, there's mTOR, obviously mTOR, the, the core protein of this complex is the same in both mTOR complex one and two. There's also these proteins, Gable and Deptor. These are just associated proteins that are kind of like scaffolding proteins. They hold the structures together, okay? In mTOR complex one, there's a specific protein that's really important, and that's this protein, Raptor. And Raptor is important, and it's, and it's given the name, the RAP, so the rapamycin-sensitive partner of TOR. So, so this is giving it the rapamycin-sensitive. In mTOR complex two, instead of having Raptor, you have Richter. And the Richter stands for the rapamycin insensitive complex of TOR. And so this one is insensitive to rapamycin initially. Eventually, over time, it will become sensitive, but that's less important. This is the one that's acutely um, rapamycin sensitive. And then mTOR complex two also has this, and, uh, this protein in it, mSyn1. And mSyn1 is thought to do a number of different things, but one thing that it's thought to do is, is localize this complex to um, membranes within the cell. All right, so what does mTOR do? Well, mTOR is regulate, it, it's involved in cell size regulation and metabolism. So, and this makes sense with us saying that it's important for muscle hypertrophy. That's regulation of cell size. In most cells, as the cell grows, it divides. So in most cells, there are never really bigger cells because once you get to a certain threshold size, you divide. So in, in many cells that divide a lot, they have uncontrolled growth, we call that cancer. So one of the things that's important in cancer and where rapamycin is used is, is, and other drugs that target mTOR is in, is in treating and, and preventing cancer growth because cancers, just like muscles, if we wanna make the muscle bigger, we need to drive protein synthesis and we need to drive a bunch of adaptive anabolic responses. If a cancer is gonna grow bigger, it needs to drive, use the same kind of system in order for it to grow bigger and, and stronger itself. So what it does is it controls protein synthesis, it increases protein synthesis by giving us more ribosomes so that we can make more protein and activating the ribosomes that already exist by increasing the rates of initiation and elongation. So you both make new ribosomes and you activate the existing ribosomes. And what it also does is it prevents protein de degradation. So if like your bank account, synthesis is what's going into your bank account, degradation is coming out. If we wanna make your bank account get bigger, we can either decrease degradation, increase synthesis, or really the key is that we increase synthesis more than degradation. We increase the income more than we increase the outflow, all right? If we increase income more than we, more than we spend, what we're going to do, our bank account's gonna get bigger. If we don't do that, if we have more degradation and, or if we have more outflow, so we're paying off more things, we're buying more things, and we decrease our income, our bank account gets smaller, and similarly, our muscle gets smaller when synthesis is lower than degradation. All right, so mTOR is regulating protein synthesis and degradation, and we'll talk about that, as well as metabolism. So how does it do this? Well, we're gonna talk about these types of pathways, but this is the type of thing that mTOR, in this diagram, I have mTOR up here, and it's phosphorylating, that's what the arrows are, are sim signaling. It phosphorylates, remember that cap binding protein that blocked 
the ability of 4E to, to bind to 4G and start translation? Well, mTOR complex 1 phosphorylates 4EBP. When it's phosphorylated, it doesn't bind to 4E into the 4E. And so the 4EBP moves away from 4E and that starts in uh, translation initiation. It can also phosphorylate as 6 kinase 1, as I showed you in the data that I showed you earlier, as, as this is kind of one of the, the, the markers of mTOR activity. And when we, it phosphorylates S6 kinase 1, it can also do a number of different things that increase elongation and initiation. And the other thing that mTOR can do is it can affect these 5 prime top mRNAs. And it's not by phosphorylating them here, it's by phosphorylating and regulating another protein. And, and, and that protein is a, it's a, it's a, it's a PARP protein, so, it, sorry, it's a LARP protein. It's an LA uh, associated, so it's an LA related protein, LARP1. And what that does is that allows you to translate these messages. And these messages are unique because these things have a lot of secondary structure. And most all of the ribosomal proteins have these five prime tops in their, in their five prime untranslated region. So the only time you synthesize these proteins is when mTOR activity is high. And that's one of the ways that you get more ribosomal proteins. So we're giving more activity to the existing ribosomes through activating, uh, allowing 4E to be liberated and activating S6 kinase, and we're making more ribosomes. And the result is increased protein synthesis and muscle growth. I want to say, go back to that first thing we talked about, which is nuance. And that's that mTOR isn't everything. And this is a paper that Dan West published a, a few years ago. If you treat with rapamycin and you look at five or six hours, like the, the group, Blake Rasmussen's group did, sure enough, you can block protein synthesis after resistance exercise using rapamycin. Interestingly though, if you look at 18 hours, 18 hours, the increase from here to here is the same thing as the increase from here to here. And what that's telling us is that at 18 hours, there's some sort of a rapamycin resistant activity and it's actually uh, a Japanese group showed recently that this is actually due to mTOR complex 2 activity. The other thing that we say that mTOR is, is not everything or complex 1 isn't everything, this is the response to the first bout of exercise. And we haven't published this yet, but when we do a second bout of exercise and we wait six hours after that second bout of exercise, 48 hours after the first bout, we do a second bout of exercise, this is the increase in S6 kinase activity. It no longer goes up to here, 25 fold increase. It's now just up here, which is about a four or five fold increase. So even though everything is there, everything's exactly the same, the load's the same, all of these things, we actually don't see the same S6 kinase phosphorylation, so mTOR activity in that second bout. All right, so our recruit acute response to resistance exercise, the increase in muscle size and strength after exercise is related to the activation of mTOR complex one. The increase is proportional to the load across the muscle, the volume of resistance exercise and the proximity to failure. So the more you get towards failure, the greater number of muscle fibers within the muscle are getting activation of mTOR, the greater increase in protein synthesis and muscle size and strength. mTOR is a serine threonine protein kinase that's important in cell size regulation. It's activated by growth factors. We're gonna see that later um, and it's downstream going to activate things like 4-EBP, S6 kinase, and other proteins that are going to increase translation and de or protein synthesis and decrease degradation. However, as I showed you at the end, mTOR does not explain all of the molecular response to exercise. If it did, we'd have nothing else to talk about. We've got plenty of other things to talk about.